Minneapolis County double homicide from the KRMS Radio Newsroom. I'm Ruben Perdue. One of the charges filed against two men in connection to a double homicide in Dallas County has been dropped. Cody DePriest and Cody Wilson were both charged with abandoning a corpse after allegedly visiting the murder site to view the bodies of Joe and Brandy Allen three separate times without informing authorities of what had happened. That charge has now been dismissed against both men. Wilson still faces a charge of hindering prosecution. He's entered a not guilty plea and will be back in court for a pretrial conference on November 9th. Meanwhile, a motion for a change of judge has been granted for Jeffrey Stevenson, one of the suspects accused of the actual killings. Billy Medley, the other man accused of murder in the case, has filed a similar motion requesting a change of judge. An Iberia man has been arrested by the Highway Patrol. 40-year-old Robert Hurdle was taken into custody on a felony possession warrant out of Miller County. He also had a misdemeanor warrant for traffic charges in Benton County. Hurdle now faces pending misdemeanor charges in connection to his arrest that occurred Wednesday afternoon. He was booked into the Miller County Jail. Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft weighing in on the Missouri Supreme Court's decision to deny his request for an emergency stay on a lower court's decision, effectively eliminating the law for voters to show a photo ID. Ashcroft says he is deeply concerned that the judge who previously struck down the photo ID law in 2006 has been able to do it again this close to the November general elections. He says that decision circumvents a constitutional amendment to help secure Missouri elections that passed by 63% approval in November of 2016. For news anytime, visit our website, krmsradio.com. That's your Lake News Now. This hour of the morning magazine is sponsored by Lake of the Ozarks Second Home Living Magazine. It's your lake life. Make the most of it. I'm meteorologist Courtney Steinman with your news talk here MS weatherology forecast. For today, we'll be mostly cloudy with our highs in the mid-50s. We will have areas of showers lasting into tonight. For tonight, we'll drop down to a low of 44 with mostly cloudy conditions. We will have those areas of showers throughout the night. And on Friday, we'll be mostly cloudy with a high of 56 degrees. The current water temperature brought to you by Captain Ron's Bar and Grill. Home of the shootout is 67.1 and the temperature at the studio is... Right now, it's 46. Classic Country 104.9 is bringing a live country music radio show back to the lake. In November, the show will be on November the 20th. We feature the best local talent in a two-hour show broadcast in stereo from 7 to 9 p.m. on 104.9, just like the old days, live from Lodo Live in Osage Beach. It's sponsored by Jay Signature Photography, Sacalaris GMC of Lebanon, Harmy's Cheese Store and more, Kayla Winters of Farm Bureau Insurance, and Ron Yarborough of Prime Lending. Live Country Radio, November the 20th on Classic Country 104.9. Someone told me the other day about a magazine at the lake that loves food and wine. Well, that's my kind of reading. Hi, this is Terry Eifert, and when my family and I get ready to head to our second home from Columbia, we always look to our number one source, Lake of the Ozarks Second Home Living, or SHL to those in the know. SHL is cool, an insider's guide to all those wonderful hidden gems the lake has to offer. Heck, we were reading the new Silver Spoon Awards issue and found out there really was a place at the lake that served fried oysters just like my Aunt Susan in Biloxi used to make. I also had no idea there was a Papa Chubby right across from our cousin's cove. Great food for the kids. SHL is on any coffee table we own and always on my iPad favorites to access the latest issue and the best places at the lake to please our palates. SHL Magazine is my guide to making sure nobody goes home hungry or thirsty. Anyone have any idea if the barge is still cooking pizza? Nancy Lancaster in Florida called Rick Bryant in Missouri to auction her items off from Iowa. These were antiques from my grandmother's house. So they, they were all meant something to me and my, my sister and brother. And Rick brought up trucks. He picked everything up, took it down to his business, cleaned everything up, advertised, sold some items at auction. I already recommended him to several people up in Iowa. 573-346-4777 or go to bryantauction.com. This message is for home intruders, the cowards who break into people's homes to steal their hard-earned property, criminals who shatter lives and rob people of their privacy and security. Listen very carefully. We're the home security experts at LiveWatch, and we're taking you down. 
Because we're letting everyone try our newest home security system for one full year in their home. To take advantage of this amazing offer, call now, 1-800-670-9425. Live Watch has been helping protect homes for years, and we've learned the secrets that intruders like you don't want people to know. Criminals, it's time for you to be afraid, because every person who calls will be protected against cowards like you. To the criminals listening, we're taking you down. To those who want to help protect their homes, call the security experts to try the LiveWatch security system. There are no long-term contracts, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can cancel at any time. Try LiveWatch now by calling 1-800-670-9425. That's 1-800-670-9425. But I'd like to get to know you. Yes, I would. The West Side Social is the only weekly networking social at Lake of the Ozarks. In its ninth year of building business, the West Side Social at JJ's at the Copper Pot is the place to have fun and pass referrals. Enjoy complimentary gourmet hors d'oeuvres every Thursday starting at 5. This week's social hosted by Como Connect. Everyone's welcome. Meet great people, get new business, and there's no dues to pay. The social is hosted by Como Connect, JJ's at the Copper Pot, KRMS, 93.5 Rocks, and Classic Country 1049. Do you have an aluminum boat or fishing pontoon and love to crappie fish? Well, come on out and take part in the first annual aluminum boat only fishing tournament. This Sunday, October 28th, we'll fish from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks. Have a weigh-in at 2 p.m., then a fish fry. The cost is just $50 per fisherman or fisherwoman, and all you have to do is fish from an aluminum boat with a working live well. Grand prize is a brand new Yamaha Kodiak 700 ATV. You must must register to receive two free tickets to the post-tournament fish fry. The first 25 people that sign up get a free t-shirt too. Come enjoy a gorgeous fall day in the Ozarks at the first annual aluminum boat only fishing tournament. Register at SirDikeYamaha.com. It's this Sunday, so don't miss out. The first annual aluminum boat only fishing tournament is sponsored by Sirdike Yamaha, News Talk KRMS, Classic Country 104.9, and 93.5 Rocks the Lake. The views expressed during this program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Viper Broadcasting. Please limit your calls to one per hour. Live from Studio C, it's the KRMS Morning Magazine. Your phone calls are welcome at 573-302-7000 or call toll-free 1-866-372-1270. Now, here's our number one, the KRMS Morning Magazine on News Talk 1150, KRMS and 97.5 KRMS-FM. It is 910 Nine ten, and uh, yes, indeed, it is time for the KRMS Morning Magazine. Ah, beautiful day at the Lake of the Ozarks. It is, uh, let's see, nine ten, and we are uh, at fifty degrees. Looking for that high today of about fifty three. As we uh, will see, maybe a little bit of rain. We're seeing some of that moving through the area right now. Uh, again, moving uh, into southern and uh, through central. Miller County, portions of southern and central Morgan County as it exits through northern Camden County. Uh, but all in all, a, a day where we'll see a little rain off and on. 53 the high, looks like 45 the low for tonight. And then tomorrow, uh, some clouds, possibly a little bit of rain to start the day, just a, a smidge. And a, uh, a high tomorrow of 56, then clouds tomorrow night, the low of 45. The best day so far is going to be Saturday. A clear sky with a high of 66, a low of 46. And then scattered showers on Sunday with a high of 60, a low of 40. Partly cloudy on Monday, high 59, low 41. And then on Tuesday, a high of 63 and a low of 46 with a partly cloudy sky. So fall is definitely uh, settling in here to the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks. Still kind of waiting for those trees to turn. I, 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 this is what I think is going to happen. And Ike Skelton, maybe you can back me up on this. I don't know. I think we're going to get one day the leaves are going to turn like they normally would. And then somebody's going to just hit one tree... And it's going to start a chain reaction, and all the leaves are going to fall off all of the trees, and in, in one day, and then uh, then you'll hear everybody, you know, the the leaf blowers going, and you'll see little plumes of smoke going up into the air as uh, as people are setting their le- leaves ablaze. I, I I can concur with that. I, I see it, uh, and they're turning brown kind of quick. I thought we had plenty of water too. Uh, you know, they say they've turned uh, brown like that when there's not as much water. I don't yeah, know, yeah. colorful. Nine twelve, and uh, anyway, we're going to take the next two hours with Ike Skelton. We're going to cover a lot of ground. Uh, we've had a lot of people calling and asking for uh, the explanation of some of these ballot issues. And like I said at the uh, end of the Ozarks this morning, going into the top of the hour, I said you probably know the candidates relatively well, 
and maybe you've had an opportunity to talk to them or at least listen to them or do some research on them. But these ballot issues are just off the scale. So we are going to spend the next two hours uh, going over the ballot issues. Ron Calzone will join us to begin this hour, and then we'll catch up with uh, Tom March a little bit later on in the hour, and he's going to stick with us into the beginning of the second hour. And then we'll um, have State Representative Paul Kurtman joining us as well. We're going to talk about Prop D, the fuel tax. We're going to talk about the uh, uh, marijuana uh, ballots or ballot issues, uh, rather. And then we'll wrap up the uh, the conversation with Paul Kurtman and talk about the uh, redistricting uh, through the Clean Missouri Bill. Folks, there's a lot on the table. There really is. And Ike, thanks for taking the time to do the research and uh, and get it to us here so that we can discuss it. And and again, folks, uh, we've got various speakers and, and Ike here. So if you have questions or you want to know a little bit more, feel free to pick up the phone and call us during these uh, two hours at five seven three. Three zero two seven thousand or eight seven seven three three zero eleven fifty. Yeah, we're going to try to look into it a little bit deeper than <clears throat> than maybe uh, uh, some folks would. I know the uh, uh, a lot of Republican leaders are are touting and coming out in favor of Prop D, and and you make your own decision on that. We're just going to show you some of the uh, some of the back issues that are happening with it. There's more in the bill. It's not just a gasoline uh, uh, rate increase, and it's not just for roads and bridges. So um, those that might think they want roads we need to get roads and bridges and and i'm kind of one of those folks and and i've said for a long time i could agree with a gas tax if there were some other things thrown in there and and other ways of doing it but um and then the the marijuana bills um we're going to look at those again from not necessarily from the merit of whether uh marijuana or any of its components are good in a health fashion we're going to look at it more from uh more from a liberty issue what does the law if it were passed what is that going to show um, and and how many different hoops and things that are going through? There's one bill that that I don't even, or one proposition or amendment, whichever it is, that that I don't even know how that made muster for sure. But we'll get into that uh, once we do it. And then the Clean Missouri bill, our, our amendment uh, that deals with redistricting, there are so many different things in there. I, I really, again, don't know how that made muster other than you know a judge decided to allow it on the ballot. Um, and because um, uh, it's not just one issue, there there's several things going on in in, in the Clean Missouri Amendment, and and uh, we'll we'll discuss that from all of the, its different angles as well. So uh, appreciate you having given us this time this morning to talk about it, and I hope folks uh, get a better understanding of what's happening. Please, folks, on. call your friends, call your neighbors, tell them to listen in and uh, and and to make their own judgment and make their own assessment based on what they hear. But more importantly, take the time between now and November six to to really sit down and try to do some research if you can. And don't just let other people sway your vote. It is your vote. You should have at least uh, some uh, bit of education on these ballot issues before you go in and start checking yes or no, uh, because uh, who knows exactly how these are going to play out. Now, you mentioned Prop D, the fuel tax. It's been talked about in a lot of different lights. It's actually being backed by a lot of uh, folks involved with agriculture uh, here in the state of Missouri. Uh, It's also been uh, a little controversial about how it was initially placed Uh, on the ballot, uh, along with another issue, but it was uh, stated that both of those issues had to do the the, the Prop D issue, the uh, the fuel tax, and this other issue involving Olympic athletes and their medals Mm -hmm. had to do with revenue, so it was allowed to stay on the ballot. Sure. It wasn't two different topics. So, a little confusion surrounding this. Um, There are a lot of people that have come out and said, you know, one way or the other, um, that Missouri does need something to happen in order to be able to fund roads and bridges, but that's the main concern with this. If this money is approved by voters in the state, the state or the, the voters, the taxpayers, want to see this money go to roads and bridges, mm-hmm. not to bike paths, right. not to uh, uh, you know the various uh, cable cars and things like that and some of the other ideas that they've come up with over the years. And to some degree, I think that maybe these folks have shot themselves in the foot when they had a ballot issue several years ago that uh, turned into uh, a wish list for all 114 counties in this state. And they said, well, you know, we want to get money, but we also want everybody to have what they want, too. And and then people get a, you know, they get a little leery of these things when they come around because they don't know, based on the ballot language, exactly what's going to happen. Now, according to what we're being told, a bulk of the money will go to cities and counties. They'll get additional road funds. And also, uh, money will go to cover the highway patrol, which 
Um, essentially, what you're, what you're doing here is the, the Department of Transportation gets X amount of dollars every year, and the way it's set up now, a portion of that goes to the Highway Patrol. So this is more or less trying to fund the Highway Patrol without taking money away from the Department of Transportation. Yeah, and there's an interesting clause here, and maybe when we get Ron on, he can kind of help explain that, but it says, um, it says the state portion of the revenue generated by the increases in the rate of tax beginning July 1, 2019, shall be used for the actual cost of the State Highway Patrol in administering and enforcing any state motor vehicle laws and traffic regulations. Let's bring him, uh, bring him in. He's been a guest on this program many times, and we're glad to have him back this morning. Mr. Ron Calzone. Ron, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Ron. Let's talk a little bit uh, about uh, Prop D from your perspective, and and uh, you've had a time, you've had some time to look at this and and uh, develop uh, an opinion on it. Uh, uh, based on your thoughts and what you've read, um, what is it that that you see uh, as far as Prop D is concerned? Well, first and foremost, I think that we need to be very concerned about the legislature adhering to the rule of law, and you know when. When the legislature places something on the ballot, voters can naturally assume that it's that the measure they place on the ballot has been vetted. It's gone through the normal legislative process. They've had a hearing in the Senate. They've had a hearing in the House. It's been on the floor, and they've debated it, and they made it as good as it can be. And a majority of, of our state legislators have agreed that it should go on the ballot and the people should make the ultimate decision. <clears throat> well, that didn't happen with Prop D. Uh, Prop D started its life as a bill that was totally 100% focused to providing a tax deduction for people who win Olympic awards. And, and, it, and that bill passed the House quite handily. It was almost a consent bill. Went over to the Senate and just languished in the Senate for months, just sat there and sat there, until there were three days left in the session. And then for some reason, uh, with three days left in the session, it was reported from committee and sent to the Senate. And uh, then with two days left, a bill that was about the fuel tax, uh, a bill that had died in the Senate, it could not make it through the process, it was done for the, for the year, that bill was tacked on to this bill that was originally all about giving a tax deduction for Olympic medal winners. And, and so then the Senate passed it, and then and I sent it over to the House on the very last day of session, the House passed it. Now, understand that the last two days of the session this year, and this is typical, 44% of all of the bills that were passed in the whole legislature, the whole legislative session went through the House and the Senate in those two days. So there were 150 bills that were passed. 44% of them went through those last two days. It's, it is a zoo. And you know that there's no way in the world that a complex tax measure can get due consideration and debate and be vetted properly in just those two days when they are the busiest days of the session. Uh, the measure that we're voting on, including the tax on fuel and funding for the highway patrol and this thing called the emergency state freight bottleneck fund, uh, none of that got a hearing in the House. The, the people had, did not have an opportunity to weigh in on it, and, and, a, and a, a House committee didn't get to deep, dig deeper into the issue and ask some questions like, is there a better way to fund this? Um, and, and so what we have is we have an improperly vetted measure that has been illegally, unconstitutionally placed on the ballot for the people to see. And I, and I have to say this. The reason I need to say that, it, the reason I say it's unconstitutional is, is that the, the people of Missouri, although they've granted legislators, their representatives, House members and Senate members, the authority to pass laws that affect our lives and liberty, we also place constraints on that authority. We said... You can pass a bill, you can consider a bill, you can pass a bill, you can enact a law, but when you file a bill, you have to declare its purpose. And you can't change that purpose through the entire legislative session. If you want a different purpose, then file a different bill. Well, that's not what they did with this bill. They started out with a bill that was totally 100% about a tax deduction for Olympic athletes, and they turned it into one of the biggest tax increases in Missouri history. Mm -hmm. 
we see that a lot when uh, when it comes to the legislature, especially a lot of these things happening. And like you said, forty four percent in the last two days. And uh, you know, I found something kind of funny when you were speaking there. You said that for some reason, the tax bill, uh, the original gas tax, didn't go anywhere for all of those several months and was brought out on the last couple of days. And I would argue that that some reason was uh, absolutely by design. And I think the the listeners need to understand, folks. Look, look, you know. Your 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 person that you elect might be an all right person because you know them and that's why you elect them and that's what everybody thinks in their own districts. But when they get together up there in Jefferson City and Washington D.C. has got to be ten times worse. But when they get together in a collective up there and they start figuring out how the, how they want to do what they want to do, they do things in a fashion that thwarts really the public's ability to pay attention to what's happening and be the watchdogs that we are supposed to be. And that's how we come up with issues like this. Now, I think you and I maybe even would agree, and I think KB here and most of our listeners would agree that we need some revenues into the Department of Transportation to deal with roads. But there's got to be a better way to do it. And um, I hope that folks can look at this and read it and and think of their own merits as to whether uh, we should go forward like this. Can you um, explain a little bit more on how the uh, the actual taxing for the highway patrol? How much of this bill is actually going to go to roads and bridges? Because what I read here in um, what's this line ten of uh, section A one is that the state portion of revenue generated by the increases in the rate of tax beginning in 2019 shall be used for the actual cost of the highway patrol. So it almost reads to me that the state portion of all the increase from this tax gas, our, our gas tax, is going to go directly to the highway patrol. So how much is of this new tax is even going to go to roads and bridges? Well, you know, that's a very, very good question. And, you know, you, you mentioned D.C. Uh, the last figures I saw... Uh, the United States Congress <clears throat> had about a 16% approval rate. People don't like the United States Congress. They like their congressmen, it seems sure. to me, but they don't like Congress as a whole. And the reason is, is they're always pulling these kind of shenanigans. They they hide stuff deep in bills that nobody knows is there, or mm-hmm. they, they'll put something that is unfavorable in a bill that everybody wants, uh, that because that's the only way they can get the unfavorable thing through. And that's right. what happens when you violate Article 3, Sections 21 and 23 that say bills have to be single-subject bills. Uh, they don't have that in, on the federal level, but we do in Missouri to prevent these kind of shenanigans. So you're right, there's a lot of, of, uh, a lot of, of mirrors and, and smoke and mirrors and, and people being fooled about what's actually in bills. And, and this funding issue is one of those things. The ballot title says, shall Missouri law be amended to fund Missouri state law enforcement by increasing the motor fuel tax, uh, la da 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 da. Well, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that all of the people that are proposing this, by the way, the people that are pr- promoting it, are the people that are going to benefit financially sure. from it, the people that build roads and bridges and things like that. Um, they're talking about how we need to fix the roads. But the ballot title makes it sound like it's going to law enforcement. How can that be? Well, the ballot title is designed to garner support because everybody wants to support law enforcement, right? But the fact of the matter is is that these funds will be in one pocket and out the other. And, and so right now, uh, a certain amount of the money that the state the Department of Transportation gets is used to fund the highway patrol. And, and the Highway Patrol needs a certain amount of money, and so they, that comes out of that fund. Well, this money is going to go into that same pot, only supposedly it all goes to the Highway Patrol, but you missed two, three little words that are in that bill, subject to appropriation. Right. And, and, and subject so, to appropriation, uh, we'll, uh, I've got to jump in here real quick, Ron, because we've got to take a, a break. We'll come back and we'll discuss those three little words when we continue on. Our guest in uh, Studio Ike Skelton, on the phone, Ron Calzone. You're listening to The Morning Magazine on KRMS. America is back at work and moving in the right direction. And our Congressman Blaine Lutkemeyer knows why. Votes matter in jump-starting the economy, and they'll matter in keeping it going. We cut red tape, job-killing taxes, and overreaching regulations. Thanks to the federal tax cuts, the average Missourian has hundreds more to spend as he or she wishes. Our factories are back to making American-made products by American workers. Wages rising, borders more secure, military and national defense is stronger. 
our future is looking up. And if even one Democrat in the Senate had voted with the Republicans, the Blaine Lutkemeyer backed new patient centered health care law would be in place with lower premiums, greater access, and guaranteed coverage for pre existing conditions. I'm Blaine Lutkemeyer, and I approve this message to remind you your vote is crucial to keep America moving in the right direction. Paid for by Blaine for Congress. It says here Missouri has over 2,000 bridges rated in poor or weight-restricted condition. And getting more dangerous every day for our kids, school buses, and emergency vehicles to cross. It says that's why Prop D is on the ballot. The gas tax was last increased 22 years ago. Inflation's eroded 60% of its buying power. We couldn't live on what we made in 1996. Exactly. And Prop D funds have to be regularly audited and constitutionally designated, so the money can only go to maintaining and improving our roads and bridges, and for state law enforcement. They risk their lives for us every day. No question. Prop D road and bridge improvements will grow the economy, reduce vehicle maintenance costs, and and return a billion dollars in already budgeted federal matching funds for our road and bridge improvements. Prop D is a solid investment for us, only costing the typical Missourian about $1.25 a month in the first year and just $5 a month after four years. Yes, on Prop D. Paid for by SaferMode.com. Happy campers get away, get away with A-O-K RVs. A-O-K RVs.com. Are you ready to get away? Whether it's for the weekend or the winter, you can go RVing and save money. A-O-K's low overhead means the lowest prices around. Go on and get away, get away. Lake of the Ozarks. Our American Heritage, How We the People Govern Ourselves. A new election year series all about the 2018 elections and politics. I'm Dr. Marvin Schultes, and I'll be hosting this tribute to America. Join me here on KRMS every Wednesday morning beginning October 10th and continuing every Wednesday up until Election Day. Sponsored by Mid-Missouri Telecom and Security, Clearwater Carpet Cleaning, Wade Covington, Century 21 Prestige Real Estate, Mills and Sons Insurance, and heard exclusively on News Talk KRMS. The talk leader. We love it. It's number one. News, weather, sports, entertainment. News Talk KRMS. Nine thirty, and you are listening to the Morning Magazine on News Talk KRMS. KB in the studio with Ike Skelton, Ron Calzone on the phone. We're talking Prop D. It will be on the ballot on November the sixth. And uh, as we went into break, we were talking about those three little words subject to appropriations. But again, with this uh, particular uh, tax that we're talking about, the increase in the fuel tax, two and a half cents a year for four years, uh, which will take it from seventeen up to twenty seven cents. That's the uh, that's uh, something we do know. And also, uh, in addition to this money being used to cover the Highway Patrol, as it's talked about in uh, the bill language, also they're saying that uh, cities and counties will receive more funding for roads as well. So that, I think, is that added little incentive to get certain folks on board because we know we know full well that one of the biggest issues for any city or any county to have to deal with is roads True. and bridges. So there you go. But subject to appropriations, Ron, I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, we can pick up right there. And uh, if you would explain those three little words to us. Well, that means basically nothing changes in terms of, of the highway patrol and funding. It's still going to be up to the General Assembly what they get and how much they get and when they get it, mm-hmm. And which, I, which frankly I think is a good thing. But my, the point is is that it's blatantly dishonest to draft a ballot title that you intend just to garner votes and then all of the ads that you hear running are are about fixing potholes and bridges and things like that. Well, and there's, which is it? There's, is there's, it about roads or is it about law enforcement? There is one ad out that does talk about the money going to the highway patrol. Go, they don't specifically say highway patrol; they say law enforcement, and then they say something to the fact of you know how how uh, tough it is for these folks to uh, to uh, go out and work and protect us and things like that. But I think the, 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 the one of the things I was told anyway, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the money that has always been appropriated to the Missouri Department of Transportation, a portion of that, does go to the Highway Patrol for whatever it is they need. So essentially, this would allow the Missouri Department of Transportation to keep all of the money that they would normally receive and not have to give any of that to the Highway Patrol and this ballot issue that raises 
use the gas tax, two and a half cents over four years would essentially be the money that would go to uh, additional uh, additional money for cities and counties, and the rest of it, or a portion of it, or how much ever, I guess, as you said, would be appropriated, is to go to the Highway Patrol, and that way it doesn't take that big bite out of the Missouri Department of Transportation's budget. Well, make no doubt about it, it all, it all goes in basically the same pot, and the more money that's in the pot, the more money there is for roads and bridges and things like that. Mm-hmm. So there's no doubt about that. I'm just pointing out that the that they pass these things by hook or crook, and and it, the ballot title is misleading. You know, if you want to do business with me, I'm a you know I'm an independent business owner. If you want to do business with me, the last thing in the world you should do is lie to me. If you lie to me, I don't care how good the product is you want to sell me, or how cheap it is, or how much of my products you want to buy. I'm not going to do business with with you if you lie to me. And you know, in a public sense, we call that the rule of law. We have a constitution that is supposed to govern the way the legislature acts. And if they don't act that way, then we need to rein them in. We need, we need to, to patch up the fence that we built around the powers that they gave them. And this is one, voting no on Prop D is one way to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the, and the, one of the reasons that that's important is, is that some real substantive discussions were bypassed. As I said earlier, you know, we all want good roads and bridges. And you know we and most of us use them or we benefit from them and it's a good way to spend public money and I like and frankly I like the idea of the people that are uh, are using the roads to pay for them you know and that's in the form of a fuel tax but you still have to ask the question is are they making good use of the money they have now <clears throat> are there other funds that are available and just how badly do they actually need them so here's one of the things that might have come out had there actually been a hearing on this bill in the house. Right now, uh, in, well, in 2019, the, the Missouri Department of Transportation is paying $289 million a year to resolve bonds. So they're paying, uh, paying off old bonds to the tune of almost $290 million a year. Guess what? In seven, by 2017, I'm sorry, by 2027, 210 million of that will be paid off. So by 2027, they are going to have a windfall of over $200 million a year that they can use to put towards roads and bridges or the highway patrol or whatever their responsibilities are instead of paying off old bonds. So you know, if I were sitting on the committee that was considering that bill, what I would have suggested is, well, if we need the money right now and there's no other place to find the money, let's propose a fuel tax increase, but let's put a sunset on it. Mm-hmm. So let's say, let's, let's sunset it coinciding with when all of this all of these bonds will be resolved and paid off and we will have this glut of money that we're now spending it's kind of like if you have a home mortgage so let's say you're you know you've got a thousand dollar a month home mortgage you're writing a check every month for a thousand dollars and in two years you're going to have your house paid off that means that in two years you have an extra thousand dollars a month that you can do something else with well that's what's going to happen with the missouri department of transportation by 2027 Actually, they get a little bit more each year, but by 2027, it amounts to $210 million a year. You know, I might have also suggested in that hearing that we are spending between $500 million and $750 million a year on tax credits to mm-hmm. people like Paul McKee in St. Louis uh, for the so-called land assemblage tax credit, um, in which we are subsidizing private uh, development that in Paul McKee's case has never taken place. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that issue or not. But the point is, is that we're that we are handing out, uh, you know, half a billion plus dollars a year in tax credits to private parties, and these are transferable tax credits that they sell on the open market for 90 percent of face value, and we get nothing out of it. You know, so there's more than w- this tax increase worth of 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 buffer of of large S actually in the Missouri budget right now. There are other ways, to, as Mike pointed out earlier, there are other ways to fund uh, the improvements we need to make to our roads without raising taxes. 
Right, and, and, and I thoroughly agree with that. And, you know, the sunset clause that you mentioned is something that, um, you know, I, I've known about for some time, but I haven't thought about because you just don't hear it anymore. It seems nowadays that that uh, uh, as soon as they, they, if they get a tax approved, it's forever. Uh, there was a uh, bond issue down in Lebanon uh, on a school, and uh, it's supposed to have been over with. Well, uh, they came back around and they renewed that bond uh, instead of having a sunset in it so that they can continue to have have that money flow into the schools continuously, and uh, that's exactly what we're going to see right here. This money is just going to continue to flow um, exclusively, and it almost sounds to me, when we talk about subject to appropriation, that's going to give the legislature a little bit more of a tool uh, to have whomever, the highway patrol or something, come groveling to them, telling them you know, they need more money, and it seems to me it puts a little more power into the hands of the legislators with that much extra money to be able to determine who is going to get it this year. Uh, uh, and, and be able to hand that out as, as kind of a, I don't know, kind of a candy or a benefit or whatever. Or we should have some in, in incredibly stellar roads. I mean, you know, yeah. if, if you recall, several other ideas have been kicked around by the Missouri Department of Transportation, one of which was a dedicated truck lane that they were talking about some years ago uh, to run through, I guess, uh, along I-70, where it was going to be strictly for uh, over-the-road uh, vehicles uh, because of the way those vehicles can damage uh, the highways with uh, the weight and things like that and the uh, the number of vehicles that uh, uh, we have. Uh, but also uh, the road of the future, which is something that they've talked about mm-hmm. as well. Um, they've talked about this uh, uh, this uh, hyper, uh, was it the hyperlink. Hyperloop, hyperloop, hyperlink, uh-huh. uh, the train that could get you from Kansas City mm-hmm. to St. Louis or the other way around in like uh, 25, 30 minutes, something like that. So there are some other projects that are out there on the table. So I would imagine maybe that, uh, you know, you talk about uh, a windfall or something some extra money, um, this might be uh, kind of the direction that they're looking into some of these other things as far as uh, there's a lot that needs to be done to Highway 70, no doubt about it, 44, 55, all those roads that run through the state. Um, but but who knows, maybe they are, and, and, and I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt here, uh, saying that maybe they are looking at trying to do some things in the future, but uh, obviously uh, they'll need the money to do them. So as long as we are uh, you know, paying attention to what they're asking for here, you know, and then, you know, five, six years down the road, they say, well, we need more money. Well, then we go back and we revisit. If, say, for example, Prop D were to pass, we go back and we say, well, we gave you uh, this uh, tax increase back in 2018 uh, in November when we uh, voted for it and it went into effect in 2019. That, that should be a sufficient enough amount of money to be getting the job done and you know look at all these other projects I, and I rem- and, and I say this because there was another project here locally that we got to it was a cost sharing project that would have helped out uh, immensely with highway 54 where they were going to take uh, the Y road exit put it in a service road and link it to the Osage Beach Parkway which would allow have allowed people to get off at Y road and, and go down the service road and, and or I guess it would have just been an extension of the Osage Beach Parkway, it was a cost-sharing program, and it got it almost made it. It got, I guess, as far as the drawing board, and then the cost-sharing program disappeared. So, um, well, you, you know, when when you're discussing uh, alternatives like that, uh, a lot of it is just a matter of opinion. What's the better way to deal with our transportation issues? Mm-hmm. But there's also when you're dealing with public policy, there's a no- whole other level of decision-making process or, or consideration that you need to to think about and that is those are things based on principle right and <clears throat> there's two principles i think that are at stake right here and the, and the thing is is that even if it's a good idea if it violates core principles then i think you need to reject it I agree. there are two principles i think that are at stake number one is do we have a constitutional republic are our public officials in this case the legislature legislators constrained by the rule of law that is the constitution who's in charge the people or government and when they ignore the limits that we place on their legislative authority, like putting more than one subject in the bill or changing the purpose, they violated that very core principle and they have usurped the, the authority of the people. The second great principle is, what can we obligate the next generation to? And I would suggest that it's appropriate for each generation to decide what their tax burden should be. And so when you put on the books a permanent perpetual tax, you are encumbering the next generation. They don't get to review that tax and the efficiency or the efficacy with which the government's using that tax. Uh, they just have to pay it. Right. Right. And so, you know, had there been, for instance, a sunset on this, 
then we could see what kind of performance we get. If the sun sets five or ten years or seven years, whatever it is, mm-hmm. and we can let the highway, the, let the, the Department of Transportation use that those funds for that period of time. If we don't like the job they're doing, we don't renew it. Right. If we think they're doing a good job, then we renew it. Maybe we give them more. Maybe, and, and, and again, that's probably something, again, that most people don't understand about the sunset. We've got a couple of callers on the line. Caller, we'll start with you. You're on KRMS. Good morning. Hi. I'd like to know... Nobody said anything, you know, this, when you talk about this gas tax, and I hope you're still on it, because I turned my radio off. So Go ahead, yes. Interfere. But has anybody said how much money they collect now, total, in one year, off gas tax now? How many millions and millions, or is it billions, of dollars that they collect now in the state of Missouri off just gas tax. All right, let's uh, let's go. I and, look across and, the street, and these things get developed every day, dropped off every day, and it's got to be billions of dollars or millions of dollars of gas tax that they're collecting. Well, let's. And let's, I look at my cell phone bill and everything. I don't think there's going to be. This will be the last tax uh, raise that they want because every election. They're trying to raise taxes for something. That's why I'm voting no. Thanks for the phone call. Um, gentlemen, can uh, can we give that man some sort of an estimate in terms of what they collect yearly on the gas tax? And, and, and I, I would say it's probably kind of hard to uh, give him a, a figure, so it'll have to be something uh, of a guesstimate. I don't know. Duran, do you know what the, the Department of Revenue brings in on the gas tax currently? You know, I do not know, but you have to remember that they also get a lot of federal highway funds. Sure. There's a lot of matching funds. Yes, absolutely true. Let's take another phone call. Caller, thanks for holding here on KRMS. Yeah, has anybody ever thought about maybe uh, lowering the wages that they're making, especially the people up in the higher up in the Missouri Department of Transportation? Do- I mean, uh, go online and see what they're making. They're They're <laughs> making a pretty penny. I don't know why we can't, you know cut their wages down a little bit yeah i've heard that the uh department of transportation is fairly heavy administratively i don't know personally i haven't dug into it that deep um i just see by the merits of this bill the way they passed it um and the fact that there is a uh ambiguity as to where the money is really going to go i I think that it's it's a failing issue um again i I think that um salaries not not notwithstanding if they were just honest and said this is what we're going to charge you it's going to go to roads and bridges and that is all I can maybe agree with some of that. I didn't look at it, obviously, but just be honest with us how we do things. One more quick phone call, and then we're going to have to wrap up this segment. Uh, caller, thanks for holding on. You're on KRMS. Good morning. Hi. I just wanted to talk about the wording on the on the ballot a little bit that you've already discussed to some degree. But um, the main first paragraph, or the, actually the second paragraph, says it will generate at least $288 million annually uh, to provide for the funding of Missouri State law enforcement. It, it, of course, hidden between the lines that they don't talk about is how much might be available out of that for road construction and maintenance. But then it says Missouri State, oh, and $123 million annually to local governments. So what what does that mean? And my last question would be, what are the chances, if we vote no on this, that that the legislature will come up with an actual gas tax for highways? <laughs> you take that, Ron. Thank you for the phone call, sir. Well, I, I think that the odds are very good. I think particularly if um, <clears throat> if people express concern about, number one, the way the bill was passed that put this on the ballot, the fact that they violated the Constitution because of the ambiguity of the ballot title and, you know, some of the, you know, the fact that it's, it's not just about fuel tax. It's also about Olympic prizes. You know, <laughs> right. give me a break. When do you put a measure ab- about uh, tax deduction for Olympic athletes? You know, all three of them uh, on the ballot for the whole state to vote mm-hmm. for. You know, so mm-hmm. obvious. You, you can look at this. You can see that there was some finagling taking place with respect to the funding. Uh, to be fair about it, the two hundred eighty-eight million dollars that's supposed to go to law enforcement, as as Kevin pointed out earlier, that's just displacing two hundred eighty. A million dollars that they're, that's already going to law enforcement. They're not going to get any more necessarily because of this, but it does free up money that's being paid to the Highway Patrol to use for roads and bridges. So th- this will, in spite of the very misleading ballot title, uh, th- I have no doubt that this will, will go to roads and bridges. My, c- my uh, concern about it is, is that they already have money that they can get from other places to pay for roads and bridges without raising our taxes. And those of us that live in rural Missouri will pay a whole lot more than what they are saying on the radio ads will be our average cost per month. 
Rod Calzone, we, that, go ahead, sir. I'll give you the chance to finish that statement. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say that when they average everybody in Missouri, including the people that live in cities and and don't drive at all or hardly at all, uh, you, they're not they're not taking into account the extra burden that those of us who live in the rural areas that do a lot more driving uh, have. And you know, we are taxed enough already. Ron, we appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, get you back on here maybe after the fact to uh, talk a bit more about this. Great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. 9.47 is our time. We'll take a break. When we come back, we're going to get Tom March on the phone with us, and uh, we'll kind of wrap up this hour and begin the next hour talking about some of the uh, ballot issues regarding marijuana on uh, on the uh, the ballot for the general election November 6th. You are listening to the Morning Magazine on KRMS. Hi, this is Bill LaCasse from SRG Financial Advisors, located right here in Osage Beach. I am proud to be your local USA Financial Advisor, and I invite you to listen this Saturday morning to the USA Financial Headquarters Show. Each week, this informative and entertaining program answers some of the burning financial questions you've been asking me. Be sure to tune in each and every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. right here on KRMS. In this race for U.S. Senate, all we're looking for is someone who's independent. Independent enough to always put Missouri first. And that's Claire McCaskill. Nonpartisan experts have consistently ranked Claire one of the most independent senators in Congress, right in the middle where she's always been. And Claire McCaskill stands up to the crazy wing of her own party whenever needed. She's been tough on border security, opposed the government shutdown. And McCaskill's initiatives fighting opioids and protecting our veterans were even signed into law by President Trump. But Josh Hawley, he's not so independent. Hawley is a captive of the secret dark money that's made his political career. One wealthy family paid for 75% of his first election. And now the big pharmaceutical and insurance companies are propping up Holly with ads, all the fact checkers call untrue and despicable. The truth is, we don't really know very much about Josh Holly, And what we don't know might end up hurting us. I'm Claire McCaskill, candidate for U.S. Senate, and I approve this message. Paid for by McCaskill from Missouri. Our American heritage, how we the people govern ourselves. A new election year series all about the 2018 elections and politics. I'm Dr. Marvin Schultes, and I'll be hosting this tribute to America. Join me here on KRMS every Wednesday morning beginning October 10th and continuing every Wednesday up until Election Day. Sponsored by Mid-Missouri Telecom and Security, Clear Water Carpet Cleaning, Wade Covington, Century 21 Prestige Real Estate, Mills and Sons Insurance, and heard exclusively on News Talk KRMS. Ruben in the afternoon. Check us out on Facebook. News Talk KRMS. AM 1150, FM 97.5 and 103.3. 9.49 is our time. Welcome back to the Morning Magazine on News Talk KRMS. 51 degrees on our way to a high of 53. We don't have far to go, obviously. And some showers off and on through the day. Still seeing some activity in northern Miller County, as well as uh, it's moving through central and into northern Morgan County. Tom March is our guest now. We bring him on. We're going to talk about uh, some of the issues surrounding some of the the marijuana legislation that is going to be on the ballot on November the 6th. Again, some things that uh, you probably want to give us a listen, and uh, and then maybe uh, after we talk to Tom at the, at the end of this hour, and we're going to bring him back to begin the uh, the next hour, that uh, we can open up the phone lines and get a little conversation going. Tom, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How is everybody? We're doing well, sir. Glad to uh, glad to have you on board with us for the, uh, the next uh, seven or eight minutes before we have to get up to the top of the hour, then we'll bring you back, <clears throat> excuse me, in hour number two of the Morning Magazine to talk more about this issue. Good morning, Tom. Um, for those who might not be familiar with Tom Martz here in the in our area, um, Tom is, uh, I don't know your position with Locke and Smith, you can tell everybody that, but the Locke and Smith Foundation is a group uh, out of Springfield that, that look at uh, all of the different uh, uh, bills that go through the Missouri legislature, and they kind of uh, grade them on uh, on how, th- how they fit within the Constitution whether the government should even be doing that sort of work, and, and is it constitutional. And uh, every year they uh, give out the granite plaque to the person who voted the most constitutionally. So I asked Tom to come on board, and and, uh, and as I mentioned at the beginning of, uh, of this show, that uh, I want to look at the marijuana issues from a slightly different angle, not, not so much the merit of whether uh, medical marijuana should exist or marijuana should be legal or what have you, uh, but more of how these bills are written and are these 
these proposals are written and um, uh, the constitutionality and, and maybe some of the pitfalls that uh, people don't think about uh, when they want to emotionally vote for this sort of stuff. So, uh, again, thank you, Tom, for coming on board. And uh, just real quick, maybe um, give us just a, a quick overview on the three, and then after we come back after the, uh, uh, the top of the hour, uh, we'll get into them just a little bit deeper. Okay, well, we got two constitutional amendments. We got uh, two and three, both deal with medicinal marijuana. Both of them have pages and pages and pages of regulatory guidelines that they've created within the Constitution. Uh, our, uh, Amendment three, the one of Brad Bradshaw's, even actually has in my opinion, legalize the art of theft for a person's property when it comes to building these uh, research facilities that they talk about. It creates what is known as a a drug czar, for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. and then this drug czar helps in creating this research board which deals with, you know, uh, medicinal uh what's the word i'm looking for research on what uh cannabis and cannabis related items can be used for both of these and including the uh the proposition actually go through and they list which different uh diseases that you could be afflicted with that you can actually get a doctor's recommendation uh, one thing that people need to be aware of, a doctor cannot write a prescription for medicinal marijuana. It's illegal. That's why they have to write a recommendation or uh, what is called a, uh, I think in one of these it actually lists That's a certification. what it's actually called. A written but certification it, by a physician. Yeah, but it's not really a it's not really a prescription no. like you get now where you go and take it down to a pharmacy and the doctor, you know, signs it. He's writing a recommendation that basically he thinks that you qualify to have a some sort of medicinal marijuana granted to you for the purpose of whatever it is the ailment that inflicts you. So all in all told and I and I have I have to come out front and say I am absolutely in favor of the decriminalization of the plant known as cannabis. There's absolutely no reason why this plant is even on Schedule 1 of the federal statutes, nor should it be regulated in any manner for a person's personal consumption. But I do have huge problems with Amendment 2, Amendment 3, and Proposition C, I believe it is, in the manner that they are written, because they basically take all the power away from the people mm-hmm. when they, in the manner that these things are written, I mean, like in Amendment 2, they're given all the power to the Department of Health and Senior Services to create rules, to regulate, to license, to... You, you, I mean, it just it goes on and on with with how the how it's going to be given, how it's going to be taken, how it's going to be dispensed, the transportation of such. Article three does this, or Amendment three does the same identical thing, and then Proposition C. I mean, there's so much within the confines of these that are regulatory guidelines, where. In, in all sincerity, the people have no control over it because this constitutional amendment, if it gets put in the Constitution, the only way to change it is what? To create another constitutional amendment to clarify some conditions that might be in here that a judicial uh, opinion might change how this is viewed. Now, the proposition is completely different. As we found out with the puppy mill bill Mm -hmm. several years ago, the legislative body can go in and make changes to it, but they probably want to be careful depending on how many votes that that gets to what they change and what they they redirect to make it so it's in keeping with the the manner in which the, the proposed law is written. And the 900-pound gorilla in the room that no one wants to talk about is the federal government. Mm -hmm. Tom, let me ask you, we've got just a couple of minutes before we have to go up to the top of the hour. Um, 
we look at other states that have passed medical marijuana uh, legislation in those states. How does what what we're doing in Missouri does it mirror any of what is going on in other states, um, or or is it basically something completely and totally different? Well, there there are there are differences in the manner in which it's written. There are differences in the manner in which it's implemented. I mean, I'm not going to say there's a wide difference, an array of what I mean. Uh, I think Amendment Two is trying to go through the application of granting more licenses, mm-hmm. so you don't have what you have in Colorado, right. which is basically you've got a few people or a few corporations who basically gobble up all the license to be the cultivators and the sellers of marijuana. Uh, Amendment 3 seems to try to do the same thing. It just didn't do it as effectively, and it seems like it actually has created the Colorado issue, which you could have, you know, one or two people control the the whole industry known as cannabis. And, and of course, with the proposition, well, the legislature can get in there and and they can redirect and reroute. I mean, the the legislature could set a set, set within the confines of law that only one or two people get a license. You know, right. one or two people are allowed to transport. So, only one or two people are allowed to dispense. Right. I so mean, there there there's just, a lot of there's a lot of people in there, and it, it seems to me that there's a lot of money to be made if we are listening to the way that uh, you are taking this properly. Got to jump in here. Got to take a break. Take us up to the top of the hour. We'll bring Tom back for uh, uh, hour number two of the KRMS Morning Magazine. Stand by, folks. Our Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler has been a leader for a stronger and safer America. Across America, a tractor starts. A shop opens. A factory rumbles to life. America is at work and building again. Senseless regulations and job-killing taxes have been cut. A stronger military safeguards our freedoms, and the ingenuity of our people has been unleashed to seek greatness. And Vicki's leadership as chairwoman of the House Armed Services Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigation is keeping all of us safer. Vicki's making sure every dollar is spent wisely so our troops have the resources, training, and capabilities required to meet the growing threats at home and abroad, which includes protecting the vital missions of Fort Leonard Wood and Whiteman Air Force Base. Vicki Hartzler cares, leads, gets results. I'm Vicki Hartzler, and I approve this message because the American dream is worth fighting for. Paid for by Vicki Hartzler for Congress. This hour of the Morning Magazine is sponsored by Lake of the Ozarks Second Home Living Magazine. It's your lake life. Make the most of it. When severe weather threatens our area, get the information you need from News Talk KRMS. We utilize the latest technology to analyze impending weather as it approaches the Lake of the Ozarks and surrounding areas. Fifteen staff meteorologists are at the ready and will help you prepare for anything from ice and snow to severe thunderstorms or worse. Our severe weather coverage is sponsored by Precision Tire and Automotive. Quality tires and top-notch service is what they do best. Be ready before it happens with severe weather updates from News Talk KRMS. KRMS. Osage Beach, KMYK. An Eldon man accused of a sex crime involving a child. From the KRMS Radio Newsroom, I'm Ruben Perdue. An Eldon man facing a felony charge for first-degree sodomy or attempted sodomy in Miller County. Courthouse records indicate that Andrew Smarsh, born in 1966, is accused of having contact with an unidentified victim under the age of 12 years old. Bond was set at $100,000. The Rocky Mount Fire Protection District is constructing a new training tower. Chief Kevin Herdeby says the project has been several years in the planning stage. It's now officially underway with some site work being done. We had an agreement where we've got uh, eight of the shipping containers purchased, and we are now leveling the ground and getting ready to do some concrete work so we can start erecting uh, our training tower and a burn room. Herdeby says there will be several advantages associated with the project, among them a positive effect on ISO ratings and cutting down on travel as part of mandated mutual aid training sessions. The total cost of the training tower and burn room will run between fifty dollars and $80,000. The Fire District's Benevolent Association is kicking in $17,000 toward that fee. Most of the labor is being provided on a volunteer basis. The training tower and burn room expected to be complete and ready for use during spring of next year. 
Osage Beach Planning Commission has a regularly scheduled session coming up later in November with a relatively light agenda. In addition to routine business, the commission is also expected to consider vacating a portion of Osage Beach Road. That meeting is scheduled to begin at 6 p.m. It will be held on Tuesday, November 13th. For news anytime, visit our website, krmsradio.com. And when you see news happen, call 317-TALK. That's your Lake News Now. This news brought to you by One Source Services, your one source solution. Need a galvanized or aluminum dock? Custom designed? Contact One Source Services. They handle the permitting, building, and installation all with one contact. OneSourceServices.net or 573-502-9350. Discuss your ideas. One Source Services will design it for your approval and then provide an estimate on delivery date. Do you need some repairs? Maybe some precast concrete? Plus riprap or retaining walls? That's all from Rockworks. It's One Source Services, 573-502-9350 or OneSourceServices.net. I'm meteorologist Courtney Steinman with your News Talk KRMS weatherology forecast. For today, we'll be mostly cloudy with our highs in the mid-50s. We will have areas of showers lasting into tonight. For tonight, we'll drop down to a low of 44 with mostly cloudy conditions. We will have those areas of showers throughout the night. And on Friday, we'll be mostly cloudy with a high of 56 degrees. The current water temperature brought to you by Captain Ron's Bar and Grill. Home of the shootout is 67.1 and the temperature at the studio is, right now, it's 47. Hello Americans, I'm Todd Starnes with news and commentary next. What does building a better bank look like? It starts with building Capital One cafes, warm, inviting places that feel nothing like a typical bank, where you can open an account with no fees or minimums in five minutes, and you'll always find people ready to help you, not sell you. Welcome to Banking Reimagined. What's in your wallet? For consumers only, offered by Capital One and a member FDIC. Cafes available in select locations. Copyright 2018 Capital One. Retired minister is facing eviction from a senior living community for holding a Bible study. First Liberty Institute filed a complaint with Housing and Urban Development on behalf of Reverend Kenneth Hauge. They say the Evergreens at Smith Run in Fredericksburg, Virginia, violated the Fair Housing Act by discriminating on the basis of religion. Last year, residents in the complex asked the minister to lead a Bible study. At first, the complex refused to let them even call it a Bible study. Instead, they had to call it a book review. A few months later, they were banned from holding the study in a community room, so it was moved to the pastor's apartment. In July, the minister was served with a cease and desist notice. Either stop the Bible study or face eviction. As First Liberty points out, it is beyond shameful to threaten elderly residents over a Bible study, and it is also illegal. I'm Todd Starnes. Hi, this is Jeff Smith with Alpha Graphics and Alpha Custom Apparel. We're the Lake's full-service, one-stop printer that can handle all of your printing, custom apparel, and promotional product needs. From business cards to business shirts and bandanas to brochures, we can make you and your business stand out. Our in-house design team can put your imagination on paper, apparel, and or social media. State-of-the-art printing equipment gives you the highest quality finished products with a quick turnaround time. We have the best printing prices in town and can meet all of your printed needs, including rack cards, posters, and full-size banners. Our printed products are produced locally and support the lake area. Alpha Graphics and Alpha Cust Apparel is locally owned and operated in Osage Beach at 1140 Industrial Drive. Stop by and see us or give us a call at 348-5900 for a free quote. For all your printing needs, Alpha Graphics and Alpha Custom Apparel are here to help you increase your reach. You deserve a vacation. Come on, you earned it. Plan now for a beautiful trip to Huaytuco, Mexico with the radio station and friends from the lake. Beat the Winter Blues January the 19th through the 26th for eight days at the all-inclusive Five Star Dreams Resort. Everything's included. Top shelf liquor, gourmet food, hotel, non-stop airfare, transfers, even your tips. Everyone that went on this trip last year said, let's go back. Huaytuco, Mexico is located just 200 miles north of Guatemala on the Pacific side and is considered the safest state in Mexico. It's different than 
other tourist zones in Mexico as it's not crowded and located next to a national park with seven mile long beaches which you can visit by Wave Runner and find your solitude. The price for this eight day all inclusive trip will amaze you. Call Direct Travel to Osage Beach for all the facts. Call 348-3166. Come on and join us. Beat the winter blues January the 19th in Huachuco, Mexico with your friends from the lake, KRMS, 93.5 Rocks, and Classic Country 1049. But I'd like to get to know you. Yes, I would. The West Side Social is the only weekly networking social at Lake of the Ozarks. In its ninth year of building business, the West Side Social at JJ's at the Copper Pot is the place to have fun and pass referrals. Enjoy complimentary gourmet hors d'oeuvres every Thursday starting at 5. This week's social hosted by Como Connect. Everyone's welcome. Meet great people, get new business, and there's no dues to pay. The social is hosted by Como Connect, JJ's at the Copper Pot, KRMS, 93.5 Rocks, and Classic Country 1049. The views expressed during this program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Viper Broadcasting. Please limit your calls to one per hour. You've had all morning to think it over. Now let's talk about it. Your phone calls are welcome at 573-302-7000 or toll free at 1-866-372-1270. It's hour number two of the KRMS Morning Magazine on News Talk 1150 KRMS and 97.5 KRMS FM. 1010 is our time. Welcome back. It is hour number two of the KRMS Morning Magazine and we are glad to have you with us. Certainly a... uh, Kind of a chilly day. Good day for maybe some uh, soup or some stew or some gumbo or some chicken and dumplings or you pick the food and ham and uh, beans. Ham and beans. Uh-huh. Had some ham and beans not too long ago with some cornbread. You better yeah. believe it. Uh, Ten eleven is our time, and uh, we are back with hour number two. As I said, and watching a little bit of rain still moving through the region. Most of it has moved uh, out of Camden and Miller counties, and uh, seeing, still seeing a little bit there in central and uh, northern Morgan County. What we are seeing is moving to the uh, north northeast and as far as the big picture goes i really don't think there's a whole lot behind it no not really not much of anything what we're seeing is kind of uh, it almost looks like moses parting the red sea you've got that uh, uh, that precipitation that's uh, to the west and northwest that's going off to one direction and then you've got what's down to the south and southeast that's going off in the other direction and like I said, it looks like uh, it looks exactly like Moses parting the Red Sea here this morning. <laughs> Ten eleven is our time again. Looking for a high today of about fifty three with some scattered showers. Forty five the low tonight with more scattered showers possible. Maybe a little uh, rain early tomorrow and a high of fifty six. Other than that, uh, for tomorrow we'll see some clouds and then clouds and forty four tomorrow night. How about Saturday? Looking good with a clear sky. A high expected to be right around sixty six oh. degrees. It's going to be perfect weather and a low of forty six. Good uh, opportunity for you to get out. I want to just throw in a quick plug for my friends at Papa Chubby's Food and Booze. They're closing their uh, doors for the season on Saturday. So uh, make sure you go out and see those folks. Get some uh, pizza, sandwiches, some great uh, appetizers. They've got some killer wings. And uh, get a, uh, a refreshing frozen beverage from Cindy. She makes those by hand and uh, makes them to order. So go out and see the folks, F to F8 in Sunrise Beach or the 26-mile mark. Tom Martz uh, joining us again to begin this hour. We were talking as we wrapped up hour number one about some of the uh, legislation dealing with medical marijuana. And the thing about this, that I, I, I you've got an amendment, uh, you've got two amendments and a proposition. Good Lord, how much more confusing <laughs> can this be? Right. And then you've got a guy, this Brad Bradshaw. And, and you know, I, I've seen his commercials on television. Mm-hmm. Um I kind of get uh, the impression that he's kind of one of those ambulance chaser kind of guys. Well, you know, I think that any proposition amendment bill, anything that you see that has an individual's name that is going to be in charge of a part of it, vote no automatically, just no matter what it is. Don't know. What do you think, Tom? What do you think? Well, I I thought it was rather unique that he was creating the position of drug czar for himself or for at least somebody within the state constitution which has all types of that person and that board has all type of governing authority that basically makes them supreme (laughs) but but then somewhere and i forget which page is on i mean god there's 20 pages of this thing that discusses how the state legislature has the availability to rule or to govern or to make legislation 
Well, the only way the legislate the only way the legislators can make legislation is is is, is if it is within the confines of the Constitution, and we don't see that a whole lot with what we do down here in Springfield and looking at how the legislators vote and how they write legislation to govern and control everyone's life. Yeah, that, that was another thing I wanted to, to uh, kind of bring up to folks about these uh, about these amendments. What you see on the ballot is is it's it's not even the tip of the iceberg. It's like the first snowflake on the top of the iceberg uh, when it comes to these particular uh, amendments. Uh, you mentioned that the amendment three has some twenty pages. Amendment two, I'm here. I think it's got uh, I don't know fourteen or sixteen pages or something. And and folks, again, you know the the merit of medical marijuana and the, the your emotion about whether it should or should not be legal and, and have or what have you is really not so much the point here this morning as much as uh, if these things pass, how heavily regulated it's going to be, how much more new law there is going to be, how much more new regulation there is going to be. And, um, you know, there are some folks, Tom, that, uh, you know, you, you mentioned uh, the 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 10,000 pound gorilla in the room and that would be the federal government nobody's talked much about uh, where you know we don't see uh, any real pushback and from the other states or anybody having any problems in the other states uh, from the federal government at this time it doesn't mean it couldn't happen but we're not seeing that at this time and I'm wondering if that is just a good uh, you know we've talked about nullification on on this radio station I know several times when Ron Calzone and myself are on or what have you and I'm wondering is, is that what we're kind of seeing is is this really just a good nullification, or are, are the is the federal government waiting uh, to just drop the hammer? Do you think? And and if Missouri becomes a part of it, uh, with all of these different rules and regulations, is that going to be? You know, are we are we setting ourselves up for some for some serious problems in the future? Well, I, I see it both ways. Now, now think about this. Let's say the federal government were to completely remove cannabis off of the Schedule One. Let's say it would it would remove cannabis completely off of the schedules as it being known as a drug. Well, guess what? We're stuck with all these laws. We're, we're stuck with these one or two constitutional amendments. That the only way that you can get them removed from the Constitution is to circulate petitions to get them removed out of it once you put it in. So if the federal government were to ever decide that they're going to unregulate this plant, we will continue to regulate it in a manner that is consistent with A2 or A3. Mm -hmm. And one of the things people I don't think are actually looking at, and I have one right here in my hand, I copied it earlier, it's called a firearms transaction record. Mm -hmm. And question 11E says, are you an unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana or any depressant, stimulant, narcotic drug, or any other controlled substance? That's the question, yes or no. Then it says, warning, the use or possession of marijuana remains unlawful under federal law, regardless of whether it has been legalized or decriminalized for medicinal or recreational purposes in the state where you reside. Okay, that's no big deal. You just ignore it. You vote, you, you say no. Well, then you come to the next page. And it says, I understand that a person who answers yes to any of the questions 11B through 11I and or 12B through 12C is prohibited from purchasing or receiving a firearm. I also understand that making any false oral or written statement or is exhibiting any false or misrepresented identification with respect to this transaction is a crime punishable as a felony Mm -hmm. under federal law not a misdemeanor a felony and may also violate state and or local law i further understand that the repetitive purchase of firearms for the purpose of resale for livelihood and profit without ffl is a violation of federal law yada 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 so i mean if, if if you have a a license or some sort of medicinal marijuana card which is issued by it appears the state we all know what happened in the state of Missouri with people with CCWs don't tell me that that information can't be sent to the federal government and then the federal government start well you know all these people here have firearms and they are in violation of mm-hmm. these certain laws and what 
what we should have at that point, and I know we don't, and this is just my opinion, but our sheriffs are the ones that are supposed to defend us mm-hmm. against the federal government coming in and just willy-nilly deciding to take our property, take our firearms within a mechanism of federal law that in reality should have never been passed to begin with. So We, we don't have those protections. Right. We haven't seen these problems that I'm aware of in, in Colorado, and I know Washington State is legal, I think Oregon. So I kind of wonder if anybody out there that's using marijuana in those states, if they're saying no uh, on, on the and, and buying a firearm, they're saying no on that application, so they're in violation of federal law, and it's a felony. Uh, but we haven't seen any repercussion of that, and I don't know that we will. Um, Time will tell. I think that they would have a serious problem. The federal government would have a problem if they tried to do that. So in the last couple of minutes here, I think we probably got to go to break real soon. If we could uh, maybe look at the three of them here, and let's just say that that uh, the voters, you know, I, 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 I buy into this stuff, and I want to vote for one of them, and I think the uh, law states that whichever one of these propositions or amendment gets the most, uh, uh, most yes votes, as it were, is going to be the one that is in control or will be the ruling authority. Um, Let's just maybe look at the three of them real fast here in the last few minutes we got in. And if you were to vote for one, if you thought one of them had any merit to it at all, uh, which one would that be? If I was going to vote for any of them, it would actually be Amendment 2. Uh, a, a three has, is too dictatorial. It's too mm-hmm. too controlling. Uh, Proposition C, I believe it is, gives way too much leniency to our legislative body to do whatever it chooses to do. Mm-hmm. I don't like the governing aspects of Amendment 2, but if I was going to pass any of them, it would be A2. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I was looking at Prop C, and I didn't look at all the things in the background with the legislature uh, being able to... Uh, uh, to regulate it, but uh, I appreciate uh, your input on this, Tom. I think we got a couple of callers. KB is going to go to. Let's uh, take a, a call here, caller. Thanks for holding on. You're on KRMS. Good morning. Okay, quick question on saying that you've got to be prepared for federal government actions. I understand the real world implications of that, and if you're going to take on this fight, you better be prepared for what's coming. But at some point, don't we have to pick an issue and say? This is not the business of the federal government. This is a state issue. You've been granted no power to act on this, and we don't care Mm -hmm. what the federal law says. We are going to govern ourselves as our Constitution and the federal Constitution say. I would agree with you 100%. We just need a governor that's willing to have the the intestinal fortitude to do that. I think you were right right the first time. (laughs) Thanks. Thank you for the phone call. Uh, And and as far as 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 county sheriffs go... This is a state issue. This is an individual issue. It is not a state issue. It is not a federal government issue. This is an individual issue, right. and we're completely looking at this in the wrong manner mm-hmm. if our fallback is the Tenth Amendment, because the fallback should be what is enumerated in the Ninth Amendment mm-hmm. instead of what's enumerated in the Tenth Amendment. Okay. Tom Martz, thank you for your time, sir. We appreciate you chiming in, and uh, and uh, thanks to the folks uh, listening this morning and the callers. We're going to uh, go ahead and take a break, come back, and uh, Paul Kurtman will join us on the other side of the break to talk about a, another very important issue that we're going to be dealing with on uh, on the ballot uh, on November 6th, and that is the uh, Clean Missouri Bill, this redistricting uh, portion of the bill. Uh, Tom Martz, thank you, sir. We'll uh, be back after the break on KRMS. America is back at work and moving in the right direction. And our Congressman Blaine Lutkemeyer knows why. Votes mattered in jump-starting the economy, and they'll matter in keeping it going. We cut red tape, job-killing taxes, and overreaching regulations. Thanks to the federal tax cuts, the average Missourian has hundreds more to spend as he or she wishes. Our factories are back to making American-made products by American workers. Wages rising, borders more secure, military and national defense is stronger. Our future is looking up. And if even one Democrat in the Senate had voted with the Republicans, the Blaine Lutkemeyer backed new patient-centered health care law would be in place with lower premiums, greater access, and guaranteed coverage for pre-existing conditions. I'm Blaine Lutkemeyer, and I approve this message to remind you, your vote is crucial to keep America moving in the right direction. 
Paid for by Blaine for Congress. It is time for you to consider winter at the Lake of the Ozarks. I know we're just uh, talking about fall, but winter is right around the corner. And if the vehicle that you've got uh, right now is not something you feel comfortable with that uh, maybe you've already experienced winter in this particular vehicle, then you need to stop by and see the folks at Hewlett, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, North Business 5 in Camden, or shophewlett.com. They have a variety of vehicles that uh, will do very well in the winter, including the 2018 Chevy Trax. Right now, you can get 20% off that particular SUV, 16% off all 2019 Chevy Equinox SUVs. You can also uh, get $10,000 off all 2018 light duty Crew Cab LT All Star Edition Silverados, 20% off the MSRP on 2018 Buick Encores, and 13% off the uh, 2018 GMC Terrains. 13% off that MSRP, I might add. So if you're looking for a reliable, safe vehicle to get you and the family around this winter at the Lake of the Ozarks, and you know how it can be, Take the time now, while the weather's nice, to get over and wheel and deal with the folks at Hewlett Chevrolet Buick GMC. I guarantee you'll come out on the good end of things, and you'll feel more comfortable driving around through the winter months here at the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks. A trip to North Business 5 in Camdenton, or better yet, you can check out their website right now at shophewlett.com. It says here Missouri has over 2,000 bridges rated in poor or weight-restricted condition. And getting more dangerous every day for our kids, school buses, and emergency vehicles to cross. It says that's why Prop D is on the ballot. The gas tax was last increased 22 years ago. Inflation's eroded 60% of its buying power. We couldn't live on what we made in 1996. Exactly. And Prop D funds have to be regularly audited and constitutionally designated, so the money can only go to maintaining and improving our roads and bridges. And for state law enforcement, they risk their lives for us every day. No question. Prop D road and bridge improvements will grow the economy, reduce vehicle maintenance costs, and and return a billion dollars in already budgeted federal matching funds for our road and bridge improvements. Prop D is a solid investment for us, only costing the typical Missourian about $1.25 a month in the first year and just $5 a month after four years. Yes, on Prop D. Paid for by SaferMode.com. The sports leader. Number one on my preset buttons in my car. News Talk KRMS. 1026 and 52 degrees. We were calling for an afternoon high, an afternoon high of 53, and it's at 52, so going to get here a little early. Yeah, well, you know, yesterday was just... Perfect. Man, the weather was perfect. The last three days Golly. have been very nice. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were yeah. just... And I, I, I should have taken the time to cut grass one of those days, but oh, shucks. Oh, it's going to rain now, and <laughs> it, you can't. It didn't work out. <laughs> 1027. <laughs> On the telephone with us is uh, Representative Paul Kurtman, who's uh, joining us to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the redistricting... redistricting and uh, the Clean Missouri Bill. Paul, good morning to you, sir. Great to have you with us. Good morning. I'm glad to be here. Well, uh, I've got Ike Scotland in the studio with me, as you heard, and uh, we are going to uh, be talking about this uh, Clean Missouri Bill, which, again, the name in itself, yes. it, it conjures up all kinds of, 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 uh, of, of, of images of, of wonderful things happening and everybody holding hands and singing yeah. Kumbaya and eating s'mores around the campfire. But uh, as we found out about some of the other uh, ballot uh, information, uh, the, the, the uh, amendments and props that are going to be on the, uh, the ballot on November 6th, uh, we might want to take a little time and uh, and think this thing through and definitely take some time to sit down and talk about it, and that's what we're going to do with you. Yeah, good morning, Paul. I uh, had asked a couple of people around the state, you know, that we're, we're in the same circles, uh, who I might get on to talk about this, and they all suggested you, so uh, here you are in the spot. But um, I got to reading this, and uh, I know the redistricting was a big thing, and it, and it still is, but there is a lot of different stuff in this amendment right here. And again, it comes, I don't think the people that are, that are going to vote on this are going to be able to read it all. They're not going to take the time to read it all for the most part. And even if they did read it all, I, I've read through it, you know, and, and I've read through this stuff a lot. I don't understand some of it or, or why they want to do it. So uh, maybe you can break down uh, some of what's going on here and what Clean Missouri is about and, and tell folks uh, the merits or lack thereof of Amendment 1. Sure. And, and you're absolutely right. Uh, the actual language that we're going to be putting in the Constitution with Amendment 1 is not confined to one small paragraph that the people are going to see on the ballot. I mean, most people in Missouri are going to go to the ballot box, 
see one tiny paragraph, just a few sentences, but the actual language that we're putting in the Constitution is six pages long. Mm-hmm. People, people need to understand that we're going that most people, if they haven't read it, that they're going to be voting on something that is six pages long, six pages worth of policy that's going to be going in the Constitution, and it does a lot of different things. Um, usually, we, we get upset with politicians when they introduce legislation that deals with veterans and also deals with tax increases and also deals with schools because it's a, it's a way politicians, uh, they put a whole bunch of stuff in there to try to coax other people into voting for something that they normally wouldn't vote for. Clean Missouri is the exact same way. They are trying to hoodwink the citizens of Missouri into voting for something that is really going to be terrible. And here, here's how they're trying to hoodwink people. They put in Clean Missouri that it has to deal with ethics reform. So a little bit, just a very little tiny sliver of Clean Missouri, of that whole six pages, has to deal with any type of ethics reform, campaign contribution limits, uh, making sure politicians can't become lobbyists within two years after uh, they uh, leave office, and that's good stuff. And I'll also tell you that that is stuff that uh, Jeff- that the House of Representatives has already passed on more than one occasion. So like that, that type of legislation has already been in the works, going, been going back and forth between the House and the Senate. So it's not like that. It's not like they're not trying to do that in Jefferson City already. But in Clean Missouri, they put that in there just to encourage people to want to vote for it. Uh, one of the the big meat of it, though, the real heart of the matter. Is clean Missouri is going to fundamentally change the way we draw our boundaries for state representative and state senator. Mm-hmm. Right now in Missouri, Missouri is very much a conservative state. Even if people don't think of themselves uh, in terms of Republican and Democrat, the people of Missouri are very traditional. They're very conservative. And over the last 20 <clears throat> years, the state has gone deeper red every single election cycle. Well, there's some people that are upset with this, and they've been trying to get uh, leftist-leaning candidates elected, and they've completely failed over and over and over again. It's harder and harder to get progressive people elected to uh, the state House and the state Senate. So rather than spend a lot of money on all these different House races, they've figured out, why don't we just spend all the money we can on getting one person elected and make sure that that one person is also in charge of redrawing all the district lines. So Clean Missouri actually takes uh, what is currently a bipartisan process. It's not perfect, but at least it's bipartisan. Republicans and Democrats, and there's oversight from the courts. And so this bipartisan commission that we have right now to redraw our boundaries every 10 years, uh, all that's going to go away. Clean Missouri gets rid of that whole process, and it turns the entire redistricting process over to the state auditor and the state auditor gets to uh, pick somebody to fill the new position of state demographer and the leaders of the house and senate they have very little say in who gets to go on that list to be the new state demographer so essentially let me boil it down to this whoever our state auditor is is going to be the one that decides how the district lines are drawn that's what clean missouri says but then it gets even worse Right now, when our district lines are redrawn, the rules are, the law is, is that as the district lines are being drawn, we have to make sure that we keep communities together. We have to make sure that we uh, have a, uh, uh, a clear understanding of the differences between rural and urban and city communities. And the reason for that is uh, the people that live in, in the middle of the state right out in the middle of our farm country, our, our uh, center of agriculture, they hold different values and different principles, and they have a different idea of government um, than you might find in the inner cities. Mm-hmm. And so right now, we're supposed to respect the differences in all these different demographics of people around the state and make sure we keep some people together. What Clean Missouri is going to do is it's going to get rid of all of that, and it's going to say... Don't worry about keeping people together. The whole point behind redistricting with Clean Missouri is to make sure that each district is as close to 50-50 as possible, 50% Republican, 50% Democrat. But in order to do this, it would necessarily require gerrymandering. And I'll give you an example. Right now, where where I live in Franklin County, my district, I I was voted in with over 80% of the votes. My county is 
very, very red, very Republican, very conservative. So if Queen Missouri passes, they're going to have to redraw my district so it's 50-50. They don't want another representative winning with 80% of the vote. So in order to get 50-50 in my district, they're going to have to draw a long line into St. Louis to pick up enough Democrat voters to make my district 50-50. The problem with that is is the, peop- the people in Franklin County do not want a representative from St. Louis City, and I can guarantee you the people in St. Louis City do not want a representative from Franklin County. Sure. So this is this is really going to do an awful lot to rob people of of a voice that actually represents them, that reflects uh, their values, rep, rep, uh, represents and looks out for uh, the concerns of their region of the state. The differences between the city and the urban areas, or or, or the places that uh, have a more uh, a deeper interest in agriculture and those particular issues. So. Uh, my position on Amendment 1, I'm a, I am against it, and this is not just me. Um, it, there's a lot of bipartisan opposition now. Um, you have leaders like Lacey Clay, a Democrat congressman. You have people like Marisha Paul Nadal, a Democrat state leader. People like Jane uh, Duker, uh, a Democrat progressive um, political operative. And the reason they don't want this is because they don't want to lose their centers of representation in Jefferson City. Like, like I said, they don't want a guy like me representing St. Louis City, and they recognize that if Clean Missouri passes, the, the gerrymandering that's going to have to take place in order to execute that new requirement is going to require uh, that all these uh, inner city districts uh, are not suddenly up in the air for grabs by conservative uh, candidates, and they so they don't want to run that risk either. So, right. So what we're seeing around the nation really is the Democrats are losing a lot of ground in a lot of different states, a lot of different districts, um, all over the place. And I think that what we're seeing in Amendment 1 is an attempt uh, for the left, and and I think those are the real base of of that side, the real deep left, are trying to get in any way that they can to try to change the setup of things so um, so that they can have a, what they think is a better shot of getting elected. And and if they water down your district like you were talking, I suppose they might have a better chance of trying to get elected. Um, Now, this thing, you know, in just a few paragraphs, says nonpartisan state demographer at least 13 times. So I would think that it really is nonpartisan, don't you, Paul? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you might you might think so, but if you, when you when you continue to read, you'll find that yes. in order to be the demographer, um, <laughs> one person that can't be a demographer is somebody who's held elected office. I think in the previous four years. Yeah. So so you can you can pick somebody from the general assembly as long as they've moved for out of the general assembly and they've been out for four years. Maybe they moved back home sure. and maybe they've been involved in their central committee. Maybe they've done other things. But you're not going to get a nonpartisan no. demographer out of this. No, and 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 not only that. Again, uh, the way you know, it, you know, like we said at the very beginning, the, your voter, the voter is not going to be able to look at this stuff unless you take the time, folks. If you go to the Secretary of State's page, you can pull down every bit of the language that we're talking about here, and you can read it in depthly. Now, we'll have to tell you, once you start reading it in depthly, your eyes are going to glaze over, probably like mine are. You're going to get frustrated with it, and I hope that most of you will say, well, this is enough of this. I'm just voting no because I don't understand what it is. And uh, I kind of believe uh, we should look at most ballot language that way. If you do not understand what that law is going to be, don't vote for it. And it doesn't much matter to me which one it is. Um, if it is that full of gobbledygook, and, and go- especially, as you mentioned, the Constitution. You know, when, when, when you change the Constitution, it be some, should be something very limited and something very specific that your average person can take a look at fully understand so that they can be in compliance and then move on down the road. Not this thing where you have to hire, you know, a two or three different types of lawyers uh, to tell you what it's trying to say. That's right. I'll also point out, this is not, this was not introduced to Missouri because Missouri has a problem. This is, mm-hmm. a, a, this is a, a concerted effort, not even really by the Democrats. Like I said, we got Democrats in Missouri that are against this uh, because they don't want to lose what they've been working for, you know, for decades. But this is really coming from the deep, deep left, and they have actually gone and they've introduced the exact same legislation to go on the ballot in about four or five other states. So this is a, this is a real effort um, by people from outside Missouri. Uh, millions of dollars are going to fund this from billionaires from uh, Texas and for George Soros, you know, the, the famous 
progressive financier. Uh, he has put uh, lots of money into this, several six-figure checks um, to, to help fund the campaign to get this across. The name Clean, Clean Missouri was not an accident. They put it on there to make it easier for voters to vote yes when they get in the ballot box because a lot of people might just see the title and vote you know, clean. Who, who's going to vote no on something that's <laughs> clean? You know, so, so this, was, this is a really clever approach for the deep left to try to really change the fundamental way in which we choose our representation. 10.39 is our time. Paul Kurtman is our guest on the phone. Ike Skelton in studio. Paul, we need to step aside and take a quick break. We'll do that and come back and talk some more on the Morning Magazine here on News Talk KRMS, and your phone calls are welcome. Do you have an aluminum boat or fishing pontoon and love to crappie fish? Well, come on out and take part in the first annual aluminum boat only fishing tournament this Sunday, October 28th. We'll fish from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks. Have a weigh in at 2 p.m., then a fish fry. The cost is just $50 per fisherman or fisherwoman, and all you have to do is fish from an aluminum boat with a working live well. Grand prize is a brand and new Yamaha Kodiak 700 ATV. You must register to receive two free tickets to the post-tournament fish fry. The first 25 people that sign up get a free t-shirt too. Come enjoy a gorgeous fall day in the Ozarks at the first annual aluminum boat only fishing tournament. Register at SirDikeYamaha.com. It's this Sunday, so don't miss out. The first annual aluminum boat only fishing tournament is sponsored by Sirdike Yamaha. News Talk KRMS. Classic Country 1 104.9 and 93.5 rocks the lake. When Choice Privileges Rewards program members stay at Econolodge Inn and Suites Lake of the Ozarks, they can earn points for free stays or other rewards as well as redeem points for free stays. If you're not already a member, stop by or call to join. In Osage Beach, take the Nichols Road exit to 5760 Osage Beach Parkway. Turn left one block to Hotel on the right. Book with your favorite site or with our lowest price guarantee and more upgrade options, call us direct at 573-348-1781 to make your Econolodge Inn and Suites reservation today. You deserve a vacation. Come on, you earned it. Plan now for a beautiful trip to Huaytuco, Mexico with the radio station and friends from the lake. Beat the winter blues January the 19th through the 26th for eight days at the all-inclusive Five Star Dreams Resort. Everything's included. Top shelf liquor, gourmet food, hotel, non-stop airfare, transfers, even your tips. Everyone that went on this trip last year said, let's go back. Huaytuco, Mexico is located just 200 miles north of Guatemala on the Pacific side and is considered the safest state in Mexico. It's different than other tourist zones in Mexico as it's not crowded and located next to a national park with seven mile long beaches which you can visit by Wave Runner and find your solitude. The price for this eight day all inclusive trip will amaze you. Call Direct Travel in Osage Beach for all the facts. Call 348-3166. Come on and join us. Beat the winter blues January the 19th in Huatuco, Mexico with your friends from the lake, KRMS 93.5 Rocks and Classic Country 1049. RJ's Family Restaurant offers a breakfast and lunch menu that's sure to satisfy all ages. Stop by on weekends for their awesome breakfast buffet. Lunch at RJ's will make your stomach feel happy. Pot roast, mashed potatoes, homestyle vegetables, fresh salads, and a full line of homemade desserts. Every Tuesday, get two eggs, hash brown, and toast for only $2.99 and 50 cent coffee all day long. On Highway 54 West in Camdenton with plenty of convenient parking, it's RJ's Family Restaurant. Close to home, yet far from ordinary. Our American heritage, how we the people govern ourselves. A new election year series all about the 2018 elections and politics. I'm Dr. Marvin Schultes, and I'll be hosting this tribute to America. Join me here on KRMS every Wednesday morning beginning October 10th and continuing every Wednesday up until Election Day. Sponsored by Mid-Missouri Telecom and Security, Clearwater Carpet Cleaning, Wade Covington, Century 21 Prestige Real Estate, Mills and Sons Insurance, and heard exclusively on News Talk KRMS. The sports leader. You're in need of a serious attitude adjustment, young man. An institution of public service, KRMS. 1043, 53 degrees, so we've made the afternoon high. I feel warmer already. (laughs) Watching a little bit of rain pushing its way out of central Missouri. Up uh, a little closer now, moving through Montauk, Cooper, Cole, Osage counties. Just some light rain. Just about out of Morgan County, the northernmost part of that county, still experiencing a little bit of very, very, very light rain. As a matter of fact, we're starting to see a little bit of sunshine, and that's certainly... uh, well received on a day like today. Mm-hmm. Ike Skelton Studio, Paul Kurtman on the telephone with us, and uh, Ike, want to jump back in here with Paul? Um, and just real quick before we do this, um, 
got an email talking about what we were talking about with Tom Martz. Um, this is what A2, A3, and PC should have been. No law <clears throat> shall be passed, nor shall any regulation be placed into effect regarding the voluntary consumption, inhalation, ingestion, application, or other form of introduction into or onto one's person of any amount of any substance whatsoever, except such regulation that might be deemed in the pursuit of reliability of the contents of such substance. <laughs> uh, just to bring you up to speed, Paul, we've been talking about all the different amendments, and uh, uh, the three uh, ballot issues pertaining to marijuana were medical marijuana were certainly on the on the topic. And, and I had talked to, uh, uh, on, a, on a totally different subject, I had told, told different folks when you had been trying to pass the uh, uh, hemp bill, and that did get passed finally and signed into law, correct? Correct. That, as of... Uh I think it, we signed it into law last June. Okay. So so just so folks understand where this is coming from, too, and, and I had told you this when you were first trying to get it the first time. I think you tried to get it across uh, the finish line. But, my goodness, how much regulation, you know, how many regulations do we have to grow corn or so, soybeans? Mm-hmm. But but look at the regulation you had to come up with and, and the different hoops to jump through to be able to grow hemp. And, and it's, just a, it's just an agricultural product if we'd really look at it. But, um, you know. Yeah. No, you're you're absolutely right. It's just an agricultural product. Other states have been doing it. It it's it was never an issue. Uh, industrial hemp mm-hmm. up until the the government started passing all these laws to to ban marijuana and cannabis and other drugs. Um, and you're right. We we don't have regulations on growing corn. There should not be any regulations on hemp. Uh, just to get the chapter open in the statutes. It was incredible the type of concessions that we had to make just in order to get enough yes votes to get it through the Senate. Uh, well, the House had gotten it through the Senate year after year, and the Senate had always been the hang-up. But this year, we finally got something. So I'm just I'm just glad that now we have we can start from a couple steps forward when it comes uh, when it comes time to start amending a new chapter in law to start bringing more freedom back for the farmers in terms of industrial hemp. Sure. Um, since you're on the uh, kind of on this is your last uh, term, isn't that correct? It is my last term. Okay, yeah. And uh, that's a shame because, uh, folks, if, if you don't, uh, listeners, if you don't know Paul Kurtman, he's one of the guys that uh, um, that does vote the right way. And, and, and he really uh, thinks about, uh, about what he's voting on. He thinks about the Constitution. He thinks about liberty. And he thinks about smaller government. And that's the way he looks at uh, the stuff that he does at the best of his ability. And I think we had Paul in the area. He, he, you have been here at the Lake of the Ozarks uh, before as part of the, uh, the Tea Party movement. You spoke on a couple of different mm-hmm. occasions here, at least one that I, where, where, where I saw you. And, uh, yeah, folks are very impressed with uh, the job that you're doing, sir. So keep up the good work. Thank you. What do you, uh, and being a, a legislator, what do you uh, think about Prop D and how it happened? Um, yeah, I, and and just just how that whole mess. And, and you know, we we talked to Ron Calzone in the first uh, first segment of all of this about this bill, and and uh, we know this happens a lot. But as a le- legislator, what do you what are, what are your real feelings about the way those things happen? Uh, Proposition D. Let me make sure I, ha- I don't have my sheet in front of me. That's the gas. That's tax, the right? gas tax, and I'm, okay. I'm and I'm more concerned about how it came about. Um, I don't know all the details. I know it's something that followed uh, the the normal process between going back and forth between the House and the Senate. I know it was in the Senate. I think it came to the House one time, and that was on when. By the time we had the House vote, it was the last yeah. day of session. Exactly. Um, and. Uh, you know that the House and the Senate have been trying to pass gasoline taxes in the past. I've got problems with asking the people to raise their own taxes until the legislature can thoroughly vet that the way any department or agency has already been spending their money has already been done to the wisest and, and, and best and most stewardship ability possible. I went through 10 years worth of audits with the director of MoDOT a few years ago, last time they put a tax on the ballot. And after going through 10 years worth of audits, um, I quickly came to uh, the conclusion that they that MoDOT can do a whole lot better with our tax money. There, there's an argument to be made that gasoline taxes should raise only because of inflation, um, and, and you hear about that in their ads. But there's not a good argument to raise taxes when they're spending money on all kinds of things that have nothing to do with mm-hmm. the improvements of our roads. Mm-hmm. And we discovered a lot of that going over 10 years' worth of audits. We put together a report. And I'll be honest with you, by and large, a lot of people in the House and in the Senate didn't really care. Asking people to raise their own taxes is the easy way, it's the shallow way to finding new money. 
doing the hard work where you actually go in and, and, and go through 10 years worth of audits and try to make recommendations so that way they can actually rein in some of their bad spending practices. It actually is a lot of hard work, and it costs a lot of uh, brain power because you have to apply your mind and think through it. And there just wasn't any of that. A lot of people just really didn't care about how MoDOT was spending their money. I hardly heard anybody asking about that. Everybody else was just more interested in passing a new gasoline tax. And so I think we really put the cart before the horse, um, and we just went for the, for, the, for the easy way for more revenue rather than uh, the fiscally prudent way, and that is just reining in some bad spending practices. I, I, I am thoroughly glad that I asked you that question because there are a lot of folks um, that, uh, you know, you, you, they, they kind of do a lot of things based on emotions, and, and uh, we can see how our roads are deteriorating. Um, so maybe they think automatically it's a good idea to go ahead and raise them. And, and I find it uh, uh, fascinating that you said that this is the easy way to do things and, and uh, you know, the legislature should do more work. Heck, it's the, it's, it's the confusing way to do things. Yeah, that's and that's, sure. and that's the, I think that's the biggest part of all of this, keeping people confused so they're not quite sure what to vote or how to vote. And and, and you, you've got a 50-50 chance right there. Mm-hmm. 10.50 is our time. We've got a caller on the line. Caller, thanks for joining us. You're on KRM Good morning. Hi, I've been trying to listen to the discussion on all these amendments and propositions, and I know I've missed parts of it. But the impression uh, I get is that Ike is uh, recommending we vote no on everything. Ike is not recommending, and let, let me step in and say this right here, first and foremost, Ike is not recommending anything, yes uh-huh. or no. So it's not it's not a recommendation of any kind. It's just where uh, he made he made mention of the fact that if you don't understand a ballot issue, and he said this earlier, uh, voting no is probably the best way to go. But he is not recommending anything. He is not recommending anything on any proposition, any amendment, anything like that. Uh, basically, we just brought this conversation to the table to kind of help people understand the ballot language a little bit better. Okay. Thanks for the phone call. Go ahead. Uh, we've got Paul. Uh, we, Paul, we've got you for a couple more minutes before we have to wrap up our conversation. Any final thoughts there, Ike? Yeah, just uh, again, uh, we've got a lot of things. There is uh, maybe I'll ask you too, real quick, Paul. What is the what is the deal with the uh, the bingo amendment? Because we haven't talked about that at all. It seemed kind of <laughs> innocuous to me. And, and uh... yeah, so here, here's what I learned. And well, at least, at least this is what I was told. And I, we don't have anybody in Jefferson City um, who was serving back when bingo was first put into the Constitution. So here's, I'll tell you what was uh, relayed to me. Uh, back during the era of prohibition, uh, crime was at an all-time high. It really empowered organized crime. Um, and so in order to prevent members of organized crime syndicates from paying off politicians to change the gaming laws, they put bingo in the Constitution uh, so it could only be amended by a vote of the people. So for that reason, bingo was actually still in our Constitution. And so whenever any changes to that gaming law needs to be made, it actually has to be done through a vote of the people. Okay, so so that's what that, and it seems to be fairly. And then, of course, the minimum wage rate or a hike is uh, pretty straight tr- straightforward as well, mm-hmm. and uh, folks can check that out as they think. Paul, I really appreciate you uh, being with us this morning. I know we're probably toward the top of the clock, and I see the phone lines blinking a couple of times. Um, anything you'd like to add before uh, before you head out? Again, I just really appreciate you coming on board with us. They, my pleasure. People can send me an email at paulkirtman.com. Those emails go straight to my phone if I can be of any further service. And Secretary of State's website, sos.mo.gov, if people want to read all the ballot measures. Thank you, Paul. We appreciate your time, and, uh, and, and thank you again for being a part of the program. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. You bet. 10.52 is our time. Let's uh, take a quick phone call before we uh, move ahead. Caller, good morning. You're on KRMS. Hi. Just one comment, and I know I'm a broken record, but going back to the highway money, if we do not rewrite, remove and rewrite the Article 4 on the transportation that's in the Constitution. We can write a bill, the legislators can put it on the ballot, we can say all the money from this tax will go to the highways and that's not what's going to happen because the Constitution very specifically and ridiculously defines where the money's going to go. We've got to address the source of the problem first and that's get rid of that article and all the ridiculous details in it and rewrite it so that we fund each area separately. Thanks for the phone call. You bet. 10.53 is our time, and and, and I wonder if that's that's the... 
uh, the solution to all of this. Go back and go through it and look at it and say, you know, this is what's broken. This is what needs to be fixed rather than continuing to try and uh, and, and find ways around it. Let's take another phone call. Caller, thanks for joining us here on KRMS. Good morning. Good morning. Does anybody have any idea how much money it costs to uh, keep that jet airplane that the Highway Patrol owns up and in maintenance and everything? And why do they need a jet airplane? Thank you. And I hang out. Great show, guys. Thanks for the phone call. Yeah, I really have no idea. I know there's a new website coming out, or if it already is, and it's a pilot program or something, that you can go online and you will be able to see Missouri's budget and, I believe, every department and how they spend their money. This was uh, something that was initiated by the Show Me Institute yeah. some time back, and it was it was, uh, it was was done uh, not only on the state level, but uh, county by county, wow. and in some instances, cities as well. Cool. So if you go to if you go to showmeinstitute.org, you can find uh, a, a link to that, and it shows exactly what is spent and how it's spent. I know they did a, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Camdenton we, we looked at uh, one time, not just not Camden County, but the city of Camdenton, and it shows the, the very ex, uh, various expenditures there. 1055, caller, good morning. You're on KRMS. Hey, KB and I, great program. <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, Paul, or uh, uh, not Paul, but uh, I think it was Ron Calzone said, you know, do we have a constitutional republic or not? And the answer to that is we have it when it's convenient, and we don't have it when it's not convenient. Yeah. Yeah. And when you look at this gasoline tax, uh, the problem with it is the money that's going to filter down eventually into the communities, it's going to require those communities to do things and agree to do things that they normally would not do. Uh, because it's there's going to go through a grant funding process. It's just like if you look at uh, the uh, uh, DWI checkpoints, the majority of those are funded by MoDOT, yep. and they send that money to local law enforcement. So I, that's just not the way to go about taking care of this kind of stuff. I, I thoroughly agree, and and that's where most of the federal money comes, and that's how that's why we're seeing a lot of down in Lebanon a lot of sidewalk improvements. I don't know if we have much up here in Camdenton, but that is mostly due to a a government grant, and they had to do things that way. And the sidewalks looked fine to me at the time, but you know they got the money to spend, so there we go. I guess that's economic development. I don't know. Ten fifty six caller, thanks for holding on. You're on Kara Mess. Yes, I was wondering if uh, how can we get an amendment that. Does away with misleading amendments. <laughs> like the name. I'm being yeah. serious. I mean, we need to. And can we ever have a vote on lowering taxes? Thank you very much. Thanks for the phone call. Well, you know, we have a rule that says already that ballot language has to be fairly clear and certain only amount of topics and these sorts of things. The problem we had was we had a judge that, uh, or several judges that said, no, this this stuff is just fine. It can go on there. So if, if you have a problem with the way these things are written, and I do, and if you have a problem with the way they ever got on the ballot, I have a problem with that. Um, some of the issue is the, those judges. And uh, you know, I don't know, I, I Supreme Court judges can be voted out. So uh, I, I believe we have to vote to retain them. So, um, you know, look at some of those things. Ike Skelton, good program uh, today. Thank you for your time. Thanks to our guests, Ron Calzone, mm-hmm. Tom March, Paul Kurtman, and thanks to all of you for chiming in as well. We're uh, back in your ears tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. The Rush Limbaugh program comes your way next on News Talk KRMS. Stop scrubbing your bottom for heaven's sakes. Just stop and see it. Just stop and see it. Come with that. Delay. Econolift uses only the highest quality materials, completely galvanized metal parts, and totally enclosed polyethylene tanks for more stability and high traffic water. Made with 100 percent virgin plastic, not recycled plastic that could weaken your tanks, and they're backed by a lifetime warranty. That's why Econolift is the most dependable, yet affordable boat hoist available today. Are you tired of government wasting your tax money? I am Michael Dorf, CPA, a candidate for Camden County Auditor. As a CPA, I have had over 40 years experience in protecting citizens from paying too much taxes. As a CPA, I am the only candidate that is trained in all aspects of the job. I have been endorsed by James Antonio, retired Republican Missouri State Auditor and Chairman of the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. Might be the pizza baked fresh and hot. Or maybe it's the pasta that hits the spot. It brings us to the place where everyone goes. Little Rizzo's. World famous 
salad and sizzling steak A little bit of Italy here at the lake Distinctive flavor everyone knows Little Rizzo's Little Rizzo's The next time you call your internet or phone company, say these three letters. M-I-Z. If they don't respond with Z-O-U, then you can be sure they're not local. At Socket, 100% of our employees live here in Missouri. So you're not just our customers, you're our friends and neighbors. We bet the other guys can't say that. Socket, calls answered locally, Techie Stuff explained simply. Local phone, internet, and data. Socket.net. Hey parents, grab your little trick-or-treaters and head to Captain Ron's for the Kids Halloween Spooktacular this Sunday from 5 to 6.30 p.m. They can trick-or-treat in a fun and safe environment and get lots of loot from local businesses handing out candy and goodies there. So be sure to bring your little ghosts and goblins to the Kids Halloween Spooktacular this Sunday at Captain Ron's on Lake Road 550 in Sunrise Beach. 54 degrees now at uh, 1059, and you are listening to News Talk KRMS Osage Beach, KMYK HD3 Osage Beach. At the tone, the time will be 11 o'clock on the Midwest Coast. This is CBS.